All right, I think uh, we are live. Uh, sorry for that. Can you all uh, hear me? Hmm. Uh, yeah, okay, cool. Thank you. Um, can you see the slides? Okay, cool. We see you and hear you. What about the slides? Okay, cool. Okay. Okay, let me just uh, maximize this. I'm still trying to learn what's the trick of uh, getting rid of this. Somebody sent me a tip on how to get rid of this. I didn't manage to read it, so, but it doesn't matter anyway. I hope you can see properly. Let me just uh, go to the chat. Is the resolution okay? Yeah, okay, so. Okay, so welcome to the penultimate session of this uh, year. Uh, so the agenda today, I tweaked it a little bit compared to what I had initially in mind. That's, uh, as you probably already noticed, that's my style, <laughs> doing uh, changes, lastminute.com. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so today, uh, we'll start with the pre-lecture stuff, and then we'll uh, review some just basic stuff that we need to carry over in, about complex vector spaces that, you know, we already introduced in the, in the, in the, in the sections um, about... Um, in the intro section on complex vector spaces. And then in this section here, the axioms, I call them the axioms, maybe I should have uh, called them the postulates as uh, physicists do, but uh, I think axioms because this is a mathematical driven um, uh, course, so we might as well use the term axioms, right? And one thing that uh, we will do, um, initially I wanted to lay down all the, the, the axioms, but, um, Yesterday, I decided to change my mind. So instead, what we'll do, we'll introduce axiom by axioms, and then we'll look at the axioms, see what ma uh, mathematical uh, mumbo jumbo are in the axioms, and then we work through the mathematics of it. Okay? So you will see what I mean once you see the, the, the first axiom. I think some of you already seen it, uh, those who um, um, got the slides earlier. And then we'll go to why Hilbert, sec uh, Hilbert spaces. Uh, this is more of a like a, a very compact brief uh, historical um, overview on you know, why uh, Hilbert space came to be the uh, the, the mathematical structure for uh, quantum mechanics but uh, it will be very brief really um, not least because uh, I'm terrible with the history so <laughs> by the way some of you uh, if some of the uh, historical facts in uh, that I will cover is, is wrong please let me know huh? okay so, and then we'll go to part B where we will actually dive into this stuff, into the things that uh, matter. And then hopefully next year, uh, next year, in uh, next week, we should have covered a lot, a lot of ground about Hilbert spaces. So we can, uh, uh, early next year, once the sessions resume, we can then, uh, you know, uh, start doing the, 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 the operator stuff on, on Hilbert spaces. Okay. So, uh, the pre-lecture comment, I, I guess I already said most of the things to be said. <laughs> so we are here. Um, well done to all of you um, who have um, been on this journey with us. So we are here. And one thing to add is, I might, depending on you know where we get uh, next week, I might add an extra session here. If I feel that we need to cover some more grounds on Hilbert spaces before we get to the operators, we might. But maybe we won't need to do that. But uh, just to let you know, I will let you know next week. I will know, okay? Depending on how the session goes. <laughs> um, okay, so let me just check the chat to see if there is any questions. Uh, so far, there's no questions, at least about uh, the, um, the scheduling stuff. Okay, cool. Yeah, I don't see any questions. So let's dive into part A, which is just a review. I assume, you know, this is like a boring for most of you um, watching this. You already know this because we went through it. You know, the first thing is this uh, notion of linear independence. Uh, so a set or a subset of V is linearly independent if it satisfies this. The opposite of linearly independent is linearly dependent. Okay, and we can see these two 
uh, if we were to put this on a set of, I mean, these, these two um, uh, vectors are linearly independent in C2. We have seen that. Another important thing is that uh, a subset of V uh, forms a Hamel basis in V if um, its elements uh, are linearly independent, okay? So you look at the definition, this is uh, something you already know, most of you, at least the ones alive now on, on, on the session at the moment. And the second condition is that it, uh, the, um, these uh, vectors span the entire uh, space. Okay, this is something you also already also know. If you are struggling with the refreshing this, I just recommend you to go back again to the, uh, to the sessions where we introduce all these things. Uh, I'm just uh, recapping some of the stuff that you need to um, um, nail as we go through. Um, as an example, obviously these two um, uh, vectors in are like bases in C2. And then the question is, uh, there are, are there uh, uh, any more bases in C2? Um, most of you already know, yes, there are. If you you are like a new joining us, or if you are like, um, uh, maybe couldn't see the other bases, um, I promise you as we go along in the Hilbert space section, uh, other bases will show up, okay? Um, another thing that's very important is that uh, the thing is this uh, thing of uh, dimension. Right, so we've seen that uh, the cardinality, so dimension is just the cardinality of, uh, of, uh, of, the, of the basis. So you pick a basis, its cardinality is, is the, uh, the dimension of V. This is why mathematicians don't lose a sleep when they talk about infinite dimensional uh, vector spaces and these things, because it's just cardinality, okay? They are not thinking about, you know, direction in space and all this, uh, this stuff, okay? And very important is this, that Two, if you have two bases, B and B prime, then their cardinality is the same. So that means N equals M. So that means the concept of dimension is invariant under basis. So the, it doesn't matter what basis you choose, the vector space will always be of the same dimension. Thank goodness, right? Because uh, can you can imagine a situation where you have to, uh, the dimension would uh, depend on, on, on the choice of basis. So this is also, I think this is kindergarten for most of you by now. And this also, you can see that uh, the dimension of CN equals N. And this is like, uh, you already seen some, <laughs> I apologize to those of you, do you keep seeing this like every session, almost every session I'm mentioning this, but bear in mind there are new people joining in um, every once in a while. So that's why I keep repeating this. In quantum um, computing, you want this because uh, K is the, the number of uh, qubits so the space has to be this the of this uh, dimension, okay? And this is something we'll see now next. Uh, the isomorphism uh, theorems, this is also something that I believe you are very comfortable with that these, um, I've rephrased this uh, in these terms, like the two statements are equivalent, meaning that if you prove one, the other one will follow. So two vector spaces are isomorphic if and only if essentially they have the same dimension, yeah. The inverse also works. If they have the same dimension, it means they are automatically um, isomorphic, okay? And this is a very important one, this theorem here, which says that any finite dimensional um, uh, complex vector space of dimension N is isomorphic to CN. This is very powerful because it means it doesn't matter how abstract you, you go um, in you know, creating a, a vector space, if it turns out the dimension of that vector space is n, then it means you can, uh, you know, you can use this. You can use cn, you know, because maybe you know, the, you know, all the software packages that exist out there, they know how to deal with the elements of cn, right? So this is one of the reasons. So, for example, you will see what tensor product means in the in the in the thing uh, later in this uh, in this module, but. Essentially, that means that uh, because the tensor product of this uh, of uh, C two with itself is four, it means that it's isomorphic to C four, which is why you see uh, you know quantum um, computing guys they write this and then uh, suddenly you know you see them uh, working with C four vectors. Okay, so this is also easy. Um, it's not no problem with this so far. Um, let me before we I, I go through the axioms. Let me just check the chat. There's no problem with all this uh, review stuff, right? Okay. 
I see something related with the fractals. Yes, that's probably best. Yes, George, uh, but uh, in this thing, we are considering only um, uh, complex vector spaces. So the field is not uh, R, is the field is only C, but yes. Okay, so let's go through the, the axiom. So this is the first axiom. This is my version <laughs> of the, the thing. The thing is there is no standards. There is no like saying this is how the axioms of uh, or the postulates of quantum mechanics are, uh, you know, um, are stated, you know. Uh, there are different uh, versions, but they all lead to the same thing. They all lead to the Hilbert space formalism, okay? So this is my version. Uh, I'll explain, I'll go line by line to explain what I mean with this. So it says the states of quantum systems are modeled by normalized vectors on separable complex Hilbert spaces. Whoa, so many jargons. So by this, I mean, um, the axiom is essentially saying to us that, uh, you know, giving a, a quantum system, you know, uh, let's not discuss yet what the quantum system means yet, okay? <laughs> uh, we can do that uh, after. Uh, um, it means that from a modeling point of view, uh, you model the system by associating the state of the system by the normalized uh, vectors on a separable complex Hilbert space. So mathematically, from our point of view, at least from this course, what, what we are worried about is uh, to kind of go through with you around this concept. What's a normalized vector and what's a separable complex Hilbert space, okay? Now, this is this thing here. You don't often see this in test books because they just say, you know, oh, uh, it's just a Hilbert space. Um, this is true. You don't need to mention this bec uh, because, you know, if you are working in, with, uh, you know, uh, finite dimensional Hilbert spaces, which is the case uh, in this module, but when you are dealing with the infinite dimensional Hilbert spaces, the Hilbert space that you use to do this has to be separable. What that means will come across, okay? So just to let you know, technically, um, uh, um, the, um, the Hilbert space is not just any Hilbert space. There are like zillions of Hilbert spaces. You know, what you want is separable Hilbert space. So a, a very specific class of Hilbert spaces, okay? Um, another thing is I want to emphasize is that uh, physicists, so this way of describing a state, this state, this is what physicists call pure states, okay? There's something else called uh, mixed states. We won't discuss, so let's not worry about what that means and these things, you know, maybe you can ask a physicist and these things, but we'll, uh, we might come to that in, in, uh, later, especially in the context of uh, uh, density. So this is where the density matrix uh, uh, formalism is very useful because it can deal, it's, uh, it's a single uh, formalism that can deal with both mixed and, uh, and, and, uh, and pure states, okay? So from a mathematical point of view, states uh, in, the, in the density of matrix formalism, the states are all matrices, right? So, but the states, the, 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 uh, the observables are still like a Hermitian, but the states are a specific class of uh, uh, matrices that we will go, we'll probably come across with them, even if I don't, you know, uh, go specific into the density matrix formalism, okay? So let's not worry about that, okay? And in fact, in the advance, maybe we might we might rephrase this. Maybe not in this module because uh, you know we are. Uh, I decided to go through this route, but maybe in the advanced module we can talk about the density matrix formalism, which then will, uh, from a, um, uh, if we want to do it in a clean mathematical way, we need to talk about C star algebras. Okay, so let me check the chat. See, ya. okay. It's okay, Soham has joined us, no problem. In fact, uh, I, will, uh, I might bring you so you can uh, help me. Soham is our superstar. Uh, let me invite him before I carry on. And he's a physicist, so he's the right person for you to ask, uh, what's a pure state, what's a mixed state? Huh? <laughs> Soham, can you hear me? Yes, okay, thank you. Okay, so George is asking, what does the state mean? This is a very interesting question that uh, maybe we will touch on after. Um, it might probably be a, a physicist 
um, the person to the right person to ask about it from a mathematical point of view um, this axiom is telling us whatever a state is it's uh, modeled by a normalized vector okay so from a mathematician point of view a state the modeling aspect of the of a, of a physical of a state is is this okay obviously uh, this so this is uh, this is so the vector uh, the, the, the actual states obviously lives in a lab right i've actually seen a post somewhere saying that uh, uh the state <laughs> the uh, the state of a uh, of a system does not live in a hilbert space huh? this is the modeling aspect of the, <laughs> the the actual state is in the lab you prepare it right so Okay, but I don't want to carry on with uh, um, I mean, carrying myself into discussing all this uh, anything for now. So let's um, let's just uh, continue and let's see where the conversation will go. Um, some extra comments. This is uh, for those of you do not feel scared about this. This is just extra. You don't even need to know this. I'm just giving this, uh, especially for those who are going to go to the advanced module. You know, uh, in one of the advanced modules, we have at least two. Um, so in classical mechanics, the state. So this is this is uh, the state is modeled as uh, so the, the the phase space, which is the 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 um, the, um, the, uh, the thing that contains the, uh, the the states is a something called cotangent bundle, and it's a it's a the more precisely a cotangent bundle of a symplectic manifold. What symplectic manifold means, you know, you will find out after. You know, don't worry about this of dimension n. Okay, so uh, so you can see the classical picture is completely different. You know, in quantum uh, with this axiom, <laughs> we are dealing with uh, you know separable uh, complex Hilbert spaces. You know, in classical we are dealing with uh, manifolds. So essentially, this hints you that uh, quantum uh, um, mechanics is highly algebraic. Whereas classical is uh, very uh, very geometric, right? Because these are symplectic manifold. These are things that you find in differential uh, geometry, you know. So in, in fact, these things uh, actually they have like intersection between different branches of uh, geometry, like uh, symplectic geometry, for example, uh, differential topology, and all of that. Okay. So this is the essence, actually, how quantum mechanics differs from classical, even from general relativity, which is all about manifolds. Uh, another very interesting thing, uh, especially for the physicists, for the Sohans and the others, is that uh, there's this field called geometric quantization. Um, you might want to Google it with Z because I'm using British spelling here, um, which is essentially tries to construct. So given a, uh, a manifold, a symplectic manifold, uh, can you construct a Hilbert space of that? And this leads to some, uh, you know, uh, very interesting ideas using things like a category theory. This is something I think uh, some of you are very excited about. I know at least uh, Stefano on the audience likes uh, categories. So there you go. So, you know, uh, so the quantization could be thought of uh, something like a, a functor, you know, uh, from the category of symplectic manifolds to the category of uh, Hilbert spaces, you know. Ignore all this blah, 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 mumbo jumbo stuff. But uh, uh, this is something that, uh, I think um, some of you might be very um, interested to to know about if you're already uh, not aware of. So as part of the quantum hint stuff. OK, so let me go back to the chat to see if there are any questions. So Amir is asking, can you share a bit more about this distinction algebraic versus uh, is it a matter well, the language, this is the thing uh, for, uh, you know, the classical theories like general relativity, they are like, uh, you know, it's all about, you know, it's all about manifolds, it's all about geometry, you know, space-time geometry is a manifold, right, with uh, some specific uh, thing. But then comes quantum mechanics that has not, nothing to do with that. In fact, um, it's, it's actually not correct to say quantum mechanics is just algebraic. It's more algebraic than any other phys physics, uh, physics uh, theory, <laughs> I would say. But it also brings in other branches of mathematics, you know, in, in the case, uh, you know, analysis, you know, comes into play, you know, topology comes into play. So this is the whole thing why the, the formalism was created. In, in fact, it's the right time to come into why uh, Hilbert spaces, okay? So this is just as, um, um, an overview uh, to from the mathematical from the historic point of view. I hope I didn't get the history right because uh, I'm terrible with history. But essentially, um, you know, some of you will already know there were like a competing theories. There is the Schrodinger picture, the Heisenberg picture, blah blah blah. So this, in the Schrodinger picture, the emphasis was on the wave function, which encoded the notion of state. 
um, what physicists didn't realize at the time was that uh, the space where these uh, um, these things, these um, um, wave functions lived, uh, is this. This is the the space of uh, this, this is uh, so-called uh, square integrable functions. You know, in the integrable in the sense of uh, Lebesgue, okay, not uh, in the Riemann sense. Okay, this is something that we will come across in the functional analysis, but don't worry uh, about this. We don't, you don't have to know this uh, for, for our purposes in this module. This is just like, uh, you know, it, it just, just uh, you, you don't need to worry about all this, um, uh, these, uh, these things. We'll cover this in the, in the this is actually the canonical example of a, um, um, uh, a separable Hilbert space, okay? On the other hand, the Heisenberg mechanics use this, this thing here. This, this is also another Hilbert space. So uh, it took some time for uh, John von Neumann. I hope I didn't. I probably misspell his name. <laughs> von Neumann to um, to kind of uh, you know uh, after realizing that uh, obviously these two spaces have this uh, abstract uh, um, structure in common. They are all they happen to be complex Hilbert spaces. He proposed that the observables that were appearing in the Heisenberg picture were you know self-adjoint operators on on the Hilbert space. Uh, whereas the uh, Schrodinger wave function become like, uh, you know, unit, uh, you know, no, uh, normalized vectors on the same Hilbert space. So that way you have like this unified framework, you know, it's just a matter of choice, which Hilbert space you pick, you know, sometimes it's convenient to use this one, but sometimes it's convenient. In fact, the two are what uh, in the functional analysis language, they are unitarily equivalent. Okay, this is to say that these uh, spaces are isomorphic. In fact, any separable Hilbert, infinite dimensional Hilbert space is isomorphic to them. So in a sense, you know, you can come up with any, just like in the case of a finite dimensional case like CN, any finite dimensional um, vector space, complex vector space is isomorphic to CN. This is also the case. Uh, any separable, huh? separable Hilbert space in this case is isomorphic to this, okay? Uh, I know we haven't defined what a Hilbert space is. I'm just, uh, you know, giving you some uh, food for thought. Um, okay, so that's a brief history. Okay, differentiation, difference between, yeah, this is something, um, the difference between this, uh, this space and this, this is something that you will only know once we go through functional analysis, okay? But, uh, well, technically there are no, because, uh, you know, it says here they are unitarily equivalent, so they are like uh, isomorphic. It's just uh, a question of choice, you know, anything. But in actual terms on how to, to use them, you know, uh, on, on how their elements, how they are manifest in concrete sense, you need a bit of, uh, we need a bit of functional analysis. In fact, in here, we also need measure theory, because as it says, it's uh, this, the, the thing of a square integrable function. So we need to know what integrals in the sense of a Lebesgue integral, okay? So we don't have the language for us to discuss that, but it's a very interesting question, nevertheless. Okay. Um, okay, so before we dive in, I will just say, you know, <laughs> I think the physicists like Soham and the, the rationalists, you know, will know that quantum mechanics is a, like, uh, conceptually is a very hard thing. In fact, once I heard um, a professor saying uh, to, a student, when a student asked him, what's the best way to learn quantum mechanics without uh, losing a sleep? He said, uh, his answer was that the best way to learn it is, uh, you know, just uh, worry about, learn about, you know, the tools, the, the stuff, how to use it. And then later you can worry about, you know, what it all means, okay? So in other words, <laughs> this is the, uh, his philosophy is essentially like, uh, shut up and calculate, okay? So this is the, this is, this is, this is the thing. So, you know, learn how to use the tool and this thing, how to use the language, you know, to do this stuff, whatever you want to do, you know, as a theorist or whatever. <laughs> and then, you know, later you can, you know, worry about what it all means, you know, the foundational stuff. This is not to say like, uh, you know, foundational stuff doesn't matter, but <laughs> I think it, uh, if I was to advise, this is what uh, I think I would, uh, I would do. Okay. In fact, Feynman actually even said that because, you know, it's, uh, you know, um, uh, that nobody understands quantum mechanics, you know, and I think it's safe to say that, uh, you know, people know how to use it, physicists know how to use it, but still, from a foundational point of view, there, is a, uh, there are a lot of questions to be, to be, to be had. Nevertheless, it's, uh, it's the most, uh, you know, it's the most fundamental, uh, is more fundamental than classical uh, physics, right? 
So, you know, and some of you coming from quantum computation, you know, it's being used to enable uh, 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 quantum computation, right? So, um, so I hope you, uh, the advice was okay. <laughs> it's okay if you disagree, that's fine. <laughs> so let's go in. The first thing we need is the concept before we get to Hilbert space, you know, we need the concept of uh, inner product, okay? So if V is a vector space over C, an inner product is a map from the Cartesian product to, to C. So all this means is that it takes two elements of V and it spits out another element of uh, an element of, uh, of C, okay? And then it satisfies these, uh, these properties, okay? The first one is that um, the, uh, the inner product of any element is greater or equal to zero. And for all psi and V, okay? And it's zero if and only if the psi is equal to the zero vector. First of all, um, you have already noticed I've, I'm not using the Dirac notation. So let's, uh, I decided to not use it for now. We will recover the Dirac notation uh, in the next week or so, because I think it's easier to just deal, uh, to do this, to go through the, uh, the, the these, um, these uh, uh, first step stuff. Uh, without the Dirac notation, so it's not confusing. Next week we will go through the the notion of uh, you know the bra, and then we will recover uh, all the all the, all the stuff. Okay, so for for the time being, let's not worry about the Dirac notation. Okay, so uh, the second property is this. This is very interesting property. So <laughs> the inner product of uh, psi one psi two equals to the inner product, but with the two elements, with the two of them uh, switched, and they are conjugate. <laughs> This is a very interesting property. And then you have the linearity on the first slot, right? It says this. Um, this is also very interesting. This is called this is called the sesquilinear uh, property. Okay. This is the Hermitian property of the inner product. This is the sesquilinear property. And now as an exercise, because I know some of you already thinking, why do we do why did we do this here? Why not uh, the thing? Well, as an exercise, I want you to go and think. What is this then? You know, just remember to you to go through and see what what's the identity that you uh, you get out of this. Um, if we switch the linearity to the to the to the second to the second slot, okay. So, an inner product space then is just a, a pair where V is a complex vector space, and this is the norm. Obviously, we don't write uh, so you know um, whenever the norm is understood, you just write V. You don't need to be writing all this. And this is something that we will be uh, doing over and over again. And even in test books, they don't even write this. So yeah, let me check the chat because this is the first basic definition. Okay. Uh, what's the absolute value? Uh, we're not talking about the norm, huh? we will come to the norm, okay? So, <laughs> okay. So, here's an example. So, I hope there's no typo, but, uh, you know, there are like a concrete stuff. This is like, uh, you know, uh, all of you already know, you know, C2 is a, you know, uh, there's an inner product with C2, right? And this can also be generalized. Okay, so I won't waste time on this. What I will I will go through is this second challenge because this is something that, uh, this is a homework for you. I have a lot of challenges for you today. So um, as you know, some of you already, in, uh, you know, in the past few sessions, you know, there, we were, there was a discussion on, you know, uh, these are the, uh, the M2 of C, right? It can also be viewed as a vector space, you know, and so on, okay? So the question is, if we view it as a vector space, does any of these, you know, um, these uh, definitions of inner product um, satisfy the properties that we have seen? Uh, are they inner product? There's at least one, I can guarantee you. The question is whether there are more. Well, uh, I don't know, you need to verify, okay? So this, this will be your homework. Just go and verify if one of them, if it's only one of them that satisfy the, the, the definition of inner product or both of them, okay? And even more, um, take these uh, famous uh, 
um, these VIP elements of uh, C2, of sorry, M2, because they are elements of uh, M2C, and then, you know, do something like this and, you know, and see what, what, what happens, okay? You can use, uh, you know, software to, to, to help you compute uh, their product and these things, but uh, yeah, so this is the home challenge for you. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> Let me check the chat. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So let me go back. Now we will, uh, from the inner product, we will now recover the norm. Okay. Um, it's very important uh, to note that the concept of norm is general, it's very general. I didn't want to go through that. I didn't want to, you know, go through the abstract definition of uh, uh, inner product because then we're going to be wasting time because for our purposes, you know, the norms that we are interested uh, are always induced by inner product anyway. So that's why I'm, 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 I'm starting with this. So we define the inner product and now we are defining the induced uh, thing, the induced uh, norm, okay, which is defined like this. Okay, so it's the square root of the, the thing for each element, you have its norm defined like this, okay? And here's a proposition. This is actually, um, uh, it says if, uh, if uh, this is a norm on V induced by an inner product, then um, these properties uh, hold, okay? This is actually, this is the general property that holds for any norm Okay, this is the definition of a norm, obviously. But because I'm defining the norm in terms of uh, being induced by an inner product, then yeah, that's why I'm, I'm doing it. But in general, this is actually, this, this is the definition of an inner product in the abstract sense, okay? So, so V together with the norm, um, we call it a normed vector space. Well, surprise, surprise, right? <laughs> and there you go. These are like uh, canonical examples of uh, normed vector spaces, okay? And another interesting is that, uh, interesting, interesting thing is that from the norm, you can recover uh, the notion of distance. So the distance between psi1 to psi2 is uh, just this. Generally, when you are dealing with normed vector spaces, some, you know, in, in, it's, you normally start with the concept of metric space where you define the metric. And then from the metric, you define the norm, okay? Here we are doing it that way around, okay? Because we started with the, with the inner product space, okay? So let me just check the chat to see, I know. Okay. Slide one. Uh, could you, so Aditya is asking to go to slide one. Slide no, one. Uh, uh, I think it means that you have to go back to the slide on the inner product, uh, just to make sure that uh, ah, the definition. The definition of the inner product. Yeah. This one. Okay. Yeah, yeah. This should be one. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's it's very hard for you to do the uh, calculation on the fly because there is a lot of subtlety here, especially with this this property. Yeah. So, you know, this is something that you will probably, it's best, you know, you take your time at home and uh, go through it and also go through the study materials and, and these things, you know, you will not, it's very hard to see this, especially here, you cannot, I, I, I guarantee you there is a lot of subtlety here because of these two properties, okay? So. <laughs> okay, so let me go. Oh, we were here, okay. So this is very interesting results. Um, that's why I call them theorems. Um, for those of you being uh, attending these sessions, you know, we call proposition to things that, uh, uh, not that they don't matter, but uh, lightweight stuff, but important stuff, we call them theorems, okay? <laughs> they are all theorems, but uh, you know. So the first one is that if this is a norm on V induced by an inner product, then the following is true. Uh, this is so-called uh, Cauchy-Schwartz uh, inequality, okay? I, I could have bundled these uh, these two conditions all in the same, but it would be so busy, so I split them, okay? So, and um, uh, this is um, uh, the more interesting for me here is this one, to say that uh, the equality only holds if psi1 and psi2 are linearly dependent, 
Okay, you know what linearly dependent means. We were just talking about uh, linearly independent. So, yeah. So go and uh, check uh, check about this. And um, and I've already anticipated some of you might be thinking, why do why why do we have to put the absolute value here? Okay, I'll leave that as a homework, you know, <laughs> for for you to uh, to think. So it's not a typo. Do you think this is uh, this is uh, this is deliberate? <laughs> Um, and the second uh, theorem uh, it says this that if uh, uh, you have a norm induced by it, so it, uh, it says that uh, um, if you have a norm, in fact, this is a, I forgot to go through um, uh, this is uh, this question here, which was um, whether you are given because obviously here we 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 had the the um, the inner product. And we got the norm. So the question was here was that, you know, given a norm, can you also generate or recover uh, or check if there is a, an associated uh, inner product with that norm? Okay. And the answer to that question is this, is this theorem here. It says that uh, a norm is induced by an inner product if and only if this pro property is satisfied. Okay, this is called the parallelogram identity. This is very interesting, and I hope uh, I don't think I have made any typos looking at it. But uh, you know, if somebody spotted the, the, the thing, I, I I doubt you can you are able to spot uh, the typo on this uh, on the fly. But uh, later you can just ping me. Um, they should be also in the test book the, the thing. So I'll leave this as a potential challenge. You know, even if you are not able to to prove it, you know, but just the, the effort for you to go into because we are we are we are getting to a stage where it's really important for you to start, you know, uh, trying to, uh, you know, to 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 prove stuff, uh, harder stuff because you've been proving things so far, but to try, you know, and then you uh, go and check the results with the, with the study material to see if uh, if, you know, if uh, if you, you get to the same result. And having said that, um, when you are doing proofs, you know, your proof doesn't necessarily mean, uh, have to kind of uh, be the same as uh, somebody else's. OK, so just the fact uh, the way you arrive to a result is different doesn't mean, you know, your your thing is wrong. OK, so don't be um, discouraged if the, your argumentation is different from someone else's. OK, because there are different ways of proving things. OK, and here's another. So this is the condition for a norm to be able to generate an inner product. And this one here tells you how that inner product is. So this is it. This is called the polariz polarization identity. So if a norm satisfies this, then this is how you get the associated inner product. OK, it's very powerful stuff. Um, let me check the chat. So Nikolai, is, uh, you mentioned that it should be very algebraic, but so far, yeah. Yes, it has a geometric aspects, that's true. Yeah, um, that's why I'm, uh, I was, uh, I don't know if uh, you, um, when I was saying quantum mechanics is actually not just algebra, there are different, there are different uh, fields of uh, mathematics, you know, uh, functional, uh, like the field of functional analysis, you know, intercepts all these other things like analysis, topology, and, and, and so on. Okay, so it's not pure, pure algebraic. It looks like, uh, it, you know, the language of it's predominantly the way it's uh, the stuff are expressed is very algebraic. But nevertheless, it's not uh, the thing. It's not. Uh, it's not just algebra. Okay, but the algebra is what enables us, enables you to be able to see things because you know when you deal with infinite dimensional. Uh, vector spaces and these things, you know, how do you do, draw things? How do you see things? So algebra is uh, is your, uh, you know, the sense. Algebra is your uh, your best friend to see that. Geometry cannot help you on that. Okay. Um, okay. So. Now, you can ignore this definition. Uh, for simple reason that in this module we are worried about C n and M uh, and uh, M n of C. So these are already complete. But in the functional analysis, when you deal with the infinite dimensional um, uh, vector spaces, uh, normal vector spaces, 
not always the norm is not always uh, complete so that means the norm does not always satisfy this so you need to check you always need to check when you deal with infinite dimensional cases whether a norm is complete or not but for our case you can just ignore this okay you don't you don't need to know what all this uh, mumbo jumbo means i just you know I, I will just stick it here just 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 in case okay so a banner space um v is called a banner space if its norm is complete okay so a banner space you know so in our case if we have a an inner product space its induced norm forms a banner space if it's complete okay and here are like uh, the prototypes the good examples you know this cn and uh, and and this space okay um and now bam 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 this is the, the thing, the Hilbert space. So a complex Hilbert space is a vector space over C denoted uh, H. So we're gonna change, we will, stop, we will stop using V. We will now start using H, this calligraphic uh, H because it's Hilbert, right? So uh, with, it comes with an inner product that induces a complete norm. Okay, just, just look at the definition and uh, see what it's telling you. So it's telling you a Hilbert space is a complex vector space that has a uh, an inner product and the induced norm of that inner product is complete. Complete in this sense, sorry, in this sense here, okay? But I already said for our case, CN, you know, is complete. So therefore you can see easily that, you know, these are uh, uh, Hilbert spaces. Okay, so by in essence, by definition, a Hilbert space is a banner, is always a banner space in respect to the induced norm. Okay, now the question I put here is that uh, whether the converse is true, whether any banner space is necessarily a Hilbert space. Okay, I will leave that on the chat for you guys to, uh, to talk about this. Um, and one thing I want to also emphasize is that you know, a lot of, uh, in most courses, very often, you know, Hilbert spaces, you know, when you talk about the quantum mathematical formalism of uh, quantum mechanics, it's always about Hilbert spaces, Hilbert spaces, Hilbert spaces. But actually behind scenes, you know, you have uh, banner spaces, they also play a very important role. And this will become even, uh, this becomes more uh, more apparent, you know, to this when you, you work with infinite dimensional Hilbert spaces, where the set, for example, of, um, bounded self-adjoint operators, what all this means, we will come to that at some point, uh, they form a banner space, okay? So, you know, it's, it's, it's not just about Hilbert spaces, you know? Banner spaces also play a very, very important role, okay? Because the operator, these uh, bounded operators, uh, for, uh, they, they form their algebra is a banner space. So, um, let me check the chat. Okay. Okay, so I see Soham, thank you so much for uh, addressing the questions from uh, Nicholas and the others. Okay, so as far as Hilbert space, I'll stop here. I had other stuff to do uh, to that I wanted to think, but I think there is a lot of a lot of things for you to digest, especially in the homework stuff, for you to go and uh, you know try to get your heads uh, your uh, these things into your heads. Okay, so next week we'll continue from here. Um, um, with the, with the Hilbert spaces. So from now on, you know, uh, we'll only deal with uh, with Hilbert spaces in terms of uh, when I say a vector space, it will always be, you know, let L, uh, let's H be a Hilbert space as opposed to working on abstract vector space. Okay, so it's already a big milestone. Huh? So there's more to come <laughs> because, you know, let me go back to the first definition. The axiom. So, so now you know what the, a Hilbert space is, you know, um, we need two things. We need uh, normalize. What does normalize vectors on a Hilbert space mean? And what's this thing about uh, separable? Okay. Um, maybe this will, by uh, trivially, we can answer this because the, you know, the, 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 the finite dimensional Hilbert spaces are separable. Okay. So, but I will, I will, uh, once, once we have the, the language, the tools to need to define this context, I will say why, uh, you know, the, this uh, separability con uh, condition on, on the thing. Okay. So we already know what a Hilbert space is. So the next uh, thing is to know what uh, normalized vectors. This is something that we will uh, uh, be developing over the coming 
And then once we, uh, we, we handle the ax axiom one, we will move to the next axiom and see what it tells us, which tells us about you know, how you know, the observables are modeled. And then we will go and def develop the language, the, the, study, the mathematical stuff to understand the, the, the operators, the observables. Um, okay, so we'll go back to our friend, uh, Professor Shelton Axler. Uh, the reason for this is because um, I originally wanted to share a functional analysis uh, resource, but I think that would be very, very hard for you because most of the spaces there in these uh, in functional analysis are infinite dimensional <laughs> uh, Hilbert spaces, right? So it will be very hard. So, you know, I'm trying to juggle around to see what uh, the thing, the compromise, what we can do, especially because we are staying for, on this module, we are staying with finite dimensional um, uh, Hilbert spaces. Um, what's the closest material? So I come across this, I think, uh, you know, uh, this will be very useful. There's one thing that's super useful. So please try to go through this, which is this section on duality, where he talks about dual spaces and these things, because um, this will save us time. This will make it very easy for you to understand, you know, when we talk about linear functionals, you know, the, uh, the space of uh, um, functions that go from the Hilbert space to the complex numbers, they form a, uh, they form a vector space. They are also a Hilbert space, by the way. Okay, so knowing what a dual space in in a thing, you know that that might be very very helpful um, in 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 kind of understanding um, the shortcut that I will be doing uh, next week or so about you know um, uh, the uh, the uh, the space of uh, the dual space of a Hilbert space. Okay, because that's the space that contains the bra. So once we get there, we will define the, what the bra is, okay? And once we have the bra, then we will then recover the cat and, uh, you know, and then we can continue using the, um, the Dirac notation, okay? Dirac notation is a physicist notation. It's, a, it's not a, a mathematician's notation, but, you know, it's, it's, it's used. So, you know, I'm just trying to see the best way to make things in the sequence that, uh, you know, so you're not confused. That's the, that's the thing. So uh, long story short, um, Check this page, this uh, this section from pages 101 and 113, and then the, the the section about inner product spaces also is very relevant. So yeah, and another thing I would recommend you, because in this module, you know, uh, I'm not worried about the foundational stuff, you know, um, and I'm not sure if I'm the right person to talk about the foundational stuff. So. I had this idea of uh, maybe I should find something uh, like a companion thing that, uh, you know, would talk about these things and something that also has some quantum information type of uh, element, uh, a bit of Googling, and it has to be free also. So a bit of Googling, I found this. Uh, this is free. Um, I can get, uh, uh, I'll, 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 I'll share the resources, um, the URL for this, where you can download the entire book or download just the, uh, the, the, the chapters of, of, um, uh, that you are interested to read. So yeah, I would definitely recommend you um, uh, going through stuff like this. Maybe it will kind of uh, you know, complement the lack of uh, discussion from this uh, module about foundational stuff. So um, I'll share the URL with this uh, after. Uh, uh, so you can go and download it or some of you, you know, maybe you can Google, you'll find this. Um, another thing I want to add is uh, on, on Tuesday, there's this, the fireside chat. So our friend uh, Amir will be uh, moderating. So uh, it will be at the same time. So I hope to see you there, those who can uh, make it. Um, I'll share I will share the link again so people can sign up if you forgot URL to sign up. So um, uh, that's it really. Uh, the rest is uh, the same uh, same thing. Uh, feel free to follow us on the social thing or you know if you haven't already um, um, followed us on the on Git, GitHub, please do so. And also on the Gitter, this is where the conversation after session conversation goes in. This is where you have the opportunity to interact with each other, which I think is very interesting. Yeah, by the way, well done to Amir <laughs> for the for correcting the typo. Yes, indeed, it was a typo. So well done. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so that's it really. Let me check the chat if there is uh, anything else. Okay, I see. Uh, um, so, um, so I'm already answer.
Ah, okay. Thank you, George Neumann. Uh, I knew I kind of, uh, I cannot seem to be, uh, get rid of typo. Obviously, there is no, like, uh, with the LaTeX stuff, there is no, uh, uh, well, at least I don't have any plugin or something that, uh, you know, uh, corrects the thing. Well, in this case, it's name. The na name is very hard. <laughs> So thank you, thank you for that. Um, am I corrected or you know uh, apologies to uh, uh, apologies uh, for the misspelling? But uh, I think uh, people will probably understand. It's uh, it, we meant the great John von Neumann. So yeah, but thank you anyway for uh, for the thing for the uh, for the correction. Uh, let's see. Do they want to add anything else? Let me go back to the while we are here. Yeah, so going back again, um, we'll see next week how how much coverage we can do, uh, you know, in respect to what we need in terms of the Axiom 1. Once we have what we need from Axiom 1, I consider it, uh, okay, yeah, we can, uh, we can jump because this section is really about Axiom 1. So the other axioms will be part of this other section here, okay? So I hope you... Uh, you like the, the sequencing of this, you know, I could have come in and, uh, you know, thrown in all the axioms at once and then we start. I think this way is probably easier, much more digestible. Um, and uh, frankly, it's also easier for me because then I can uh, like, uh, you know, prepare content tailored to the axiom, right? So it's, it makes life easier for everyone. So. Um, yeah, so I see a lot of uh, discussions about, uh, yeah, this is more of an ana analysis. This is the thing. Um, that's why I, I skimmed through the, uh, the section about completeness because so far we don't have the analytical tools to, uh, to be able to think because we don't need them. We don't need to prove, you know, whether a norm is complete or not. But definitely in functional analysis, we will do that, <laughs> you know, so... We'll definitely do that in the functional analysis, uh, you know, because that's where you know we'll uh, discuss all these uh, introduce the analytical concept that we need, not just analytical, topological also, right? So um, I see very interesting conversations. So um, that I would definitely encourage you also to uh, to take it to Gitter. That's uh, easier. Let me just. Um, else yeah so that's it i don't uh i don't have any anything else uh, to share i don't know if i miss any other question apart from the stuff the conversation i'm seeing on the thing that i'm not tempted to try to answer because there's lack of language we don't have the tools to talk, discuss uh, analysis <laughs> So, um, in fact, while you are uh, engaged in the conversation there, let me see if I can I stop sharing and uh, get uh, the URL for uh, the... Um, for the for the thing, for the book. So, um, let's see. Okay, so I'm gonna paste uh, the URL uh, to Springer. Okay. Uh, was there anything else I wanted to post? Yeah, George is saying uh, thank you. Starting well, we are starting to dive deeper because you know this is the thing we, um, in fact. Uh, 
Uh, let me share again so I can go to the Chrome tab. No, tab. Um, yeah, here. You know, it's been like a long, a long journey to 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 come. You know, through all this from like the basic like uh, the thing, and you know that's why I'm saying congratulations to all of you with, <laughs> who had the patience to uh, you know to to follow up to come along. You know, but as you can see, you know, it's uh, this is why I for me anyway. This is maybe I'm very opinionated. Opinion opinionated. Uh, I never know how to say this word. Anyway. Um, um, for me, it's like very hard, you know, that's why I see these uh, courses, they jump immediately into Hilbert spaces, you know, and if you are not coming from like, uh, you know, uh, already with, uh, uh, you know, a decent mathematical uh, with foundational stuff, it's very hard, you can just, uh, you know, especially physicists, uh, when, you know, when, when I see them like, uh, you know, go to, oh, the, oh, yeah, Hilbert space, you do this, you do that, you do this and these things, you know, but we have taken the a much more structured, you know, uh, approach, you know. So uh, a way that enables you to see the forest as opposed to seeing just uh, individual trees and these things, okay? So yeah, I hope it's been fun uh, uh, for all of you. Uh, certainly it's been very fun for me <laughs> to come through all this, <laughs> but yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting. And now we are actually, uh, from now uh, starting today, it, you know, this is now the concrete stuff, really. This is the actual real quantum stuff, really. And so well done to all of you for, uh, for you know, um, following um, this journey to uh, to uh, until we, uh, you know where we are at the moment. So yeah, and more stuff to come in, especially in this section here. So you know, and another thing is this is another important thing is it's very important to kind of uh, because we will be there are especially from the stuff that we got from this section. There is a lot of uh, a lot of stuff that uh, you know we will be kind of gluing together in here, especially in this uh, in this section here about operators. Okay, so you know you need to know what a Hermitian operator is. You know you need to know what a unitary operator is, and these things. You know a unitary a matrix. You know these things. So it's very important to uh, always like uh, you know refresh your mind with these um, other stuff that we went through. So, but I will always, before we start in each of the sections, I will kind of recap like I did today with, uh, you know, with bases and these things, because next week we're going to cover uh, orthonormal bases, you know, obviously to, 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 you know, to convey the notion of orthonormal bases, you know, one, one has to know what uh, basis is, right? So, so I will always take this approach so, to kind of hint you where you should refresh before for, for, for this stuff. Okay, so that's it really. Um, have I missed any 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 question? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so. I could not really see any, but I think that today it was a look of quite a bit of new things. So there's a lot to think about. So I guess yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it's very important. I really encourage you. This is the thing. It's not something just you can come and listen, take note, and these things, because these things will not stay in your head if you don't go and see them for yourself. You know. So I really encourage you to do the exercises. Look at the definitions. You know, mathematical definitions are very carefully crafted to give you what you need in order to prove stuff. You know. So yeah, I really recommend you to uh, you know go through. You know, maybe not today. You know, over the coming day before the next session to kind of refresh and uh, do stuff. Because this is how they uh, stuff uh, stuff. Because there will be more, you know. There's more things to 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 think, and it becomes very hard if you start missing up, uh, you know, uh, internalizing with some stuff. Because there are other stuff built on top of that, and then it uh, on top of those, it becomes very hard. Okay. So with that, um, I think we are now just over the hour. I don't want to take all of uh, your time. If there are no more questions, I will just say, you know, well done, and uh, you know. I'll see you next week, which is the last, by the way, it's the last session for this, uh, uh, for the year, because, you know, the week after is Christmas, <laughs> and the week after af happens to be on, on a uh, New Year's Eve, which uh, I don't think uh, you guys would probably, uh, I will definitely not be uh, in a good state of mind after the uh, New Year, <laughs> the next day, uh, to, uh, to be uh, looking at the slides. So, yeah, so I'll see you next week then. Um, next week we'll have a session. Yeah, next week we'll have a session. Yes. 
is which is the last one for this uh, uh, for this uh, for this um, for this year. Yeah, obviously we have these other stuff that. Uh, if I add, I remember when I was saying, by the way, just before we go, I was saying I might add some extra stuff, but if I don't, if I'm able to cover everything that I think I should cover next week, then we can just close this section. It means we will still finish this foundation module on, let me check which date next year. Um, it will be on the, on the 22nd, I think, the last session. Um, if we don't add anything, if we add another session, I think it will be on the 29th will be the last session. Yeah, I mean, one week difference. I, I mean, for me, it doesn't make difference like uh, the thing. So if I, I think, you know, I, you know, uh, I don't have any problem to add another session if I think, you know, you might need some extra stuff before we get here. OK, so that's it. Um, uh, so thank you again, uh, Soham, for uh, for your uh, for your help on the chat. And uh, yeah. Um, I'll see you all next week. Uh, if you, there's no more question, I guess uh, I don't see any. Okay, cool. Thank you and uh, have a good weekend and uh, bye for now.